Hello and welcome to another episode of the How to Create VR tutorial series, where you learn by watching other VR, AR, and MR professionals create the magic. I'm Marcelo Lewin, an immersive content specialist focused on e-learning and training. I'm also the creator and the guy behind HowToCreateVR.com. My guest creator today is Max Krickenbauer, a former technical director at Trickster, now the CEO of Marui Plugin, a plugin for Maya that allows you to create your Maya 3D content inside of virtual reality. Today, Max will be showing us how to install the Marui plugin in Maya and then animate a character inside of VR to export it into Unity. But before we get started, I want to remind you to register at howtocreatevr.com. It's free and registration gives you access to all our live events, tutorials, practice assets, podcast interviews, videos, and more. It's quick and easy. Just visit howtocreatevr.com and click on the register for free button. Finally, if you want to attend our live events in virtual reality, join us inside Altspace VR. Just visit howtocreatevr.com forward slash Altspace VR and subscribe to our channel. All right, Max, welcome to the tutorial series. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to have you here. I ran across your site and I found your plugin and I thought it was very interesting. And I said, I got to have Max on the tutorial to tell us all about it. So uh, thank you. Now, before we're going to get started on this tutorial series, tell us a little bit about your background. How did you get into VR? The first time I came in contact with VR and augmented reality was when I did my university studies. I did an internship at a Japanese university. So that was back in 2010. So it was still a very different time. And uh, back then it was like just overwhelming this new concept of being able to do things in virtual reality and in augmented reality. So after my studies, when I started working in visual effects, this kind of idea never left the back of my mind. I always was thinking about, we could do this so much more efficient if we could just jump into our virtual scene and just work directly in our 3D content, right? So after working at a company for special effects for a year and a half, I went back to university, to the Japanese university actually, so that's how I ended up in Japan, and kept on studying virtual reality and augmented reality technology. And during that time, I started developing like a plugin for Autodesk Maya that would later turn into the plugin that you can see today as Marui plugin. So do you see the future of all applications like 3D apps really be having that built in? I mean, of course, I know that goes against your business model, which is your plugin. But in the future, do you see really these apps incorporating the ability to design 3D in VR? So it really depends a little bit on the kind of task that you're working on, because a couple of those tasks don't really work very well in VR and sometimes you really just want to work on a normal uh, desktop computer. But I definitely think it's always going to be an option that some tasks and some work steps are just so much more easy and more efficient to do in virtual reality that it just makes sense to offer this always as an option. And for some people in the future, it may be their dominant work mode, but that's going to maybe take a little bit more time. I guess what you're going to see in the next year is kind of like a switching between VR and the desktop. Sort of a hybrid. Exactly. Which I know that Oculus, I went to Oculus Connect 5 and they spoke a lot about hybrid apps going back and forth between desktop and VR mode, which makes sense. Right. For the time being, it totally makes sense. What the distant future brings, I can also not see. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, what did you do at Trickster? That's a VFX company, right, in Germany? Exactly, exactly. So basically, it's a subcontractor. So we did get a lot of work on these superhero movies, something like Captain America or, or X-Men or something like that. And they were doing visual effects for some of the shots. And basically as a, like a pipeline TD, my job was to mostly make sure that the whole infrastructure behind it was working. So I was also working on building tools for the artists and making sure the artists' workstations would work with all the different technologies that are there. So Maya was the dominant software at Trickster at that time. I'm not sure what they're using now. So this was basically where I came from. When I started studying, then it was the most natural thing for me to think, well, if in the future artists like animators will want to use their virtual reality, then they definitely want to continue using Maya because they're already so used and it's already so much integrated in how these companies work, this pipeline that has like, is based on one certain software that it only makes sense to make a plugin for that software and not try to create something completely new. Being a technical geek myself, that trickster job you had sounds like it was a lot of fun. It was really great. It was great. It was basically just that I was 
couldn't let go of this idea of doing something with virtual reality. Otherwise, I would definitely have stayed. <laughs> definitely. Cool. Well, Max, I'm going to let you get started. And if I have any questions, I'll jump right in. Great. Okay, let's get started by downloading the plugin file. You can get the file at our website, marui-plugin.com download. And I'm gonna choose the one for my Maya version. I'm using Maya 2018 on Windows today. So this is a Maya plugin file. There's nothing to install. It's just one single file that you get to download wherever you want on your computer. I'm gonna download it to the default Maya plugin folder. So you have in your documents folder, a Maya folder, one for your Maya version and then plugins, because that makes it easy for Maya to find it automatically, but you can basically download it to wherever you want. And once it's downloaded, I can just head over to Maya and load it here. So now we can load the plugin file in Maya. For that, we're gonna open the Maya plugin manager under Windows, Settings, Preferences, Plugin Manager. And here it will be listed in your Maya plugin folder. If it isn't listed immediately, you can click the refresh button and it's going to show up here. Check load it. And the new shelf tab will appear. At first, there won't be much in it because I have not activated this version of Marui yet. So I'm going to click on the activation icon, type in the name of my subscriber ID. In this case, this is test v3. Hit activate. And now here are all the functions that are offered by Marui. Now, just today for this tutorial, I want to quickly put some settings. This is just so you can see more easily what I'm doing. I'm gonna change the desktop mirror size. That's the window on the desktop that you're gonna see what I see in VR to full screen. And I'm gonna make sure it's always on top. Okay, now that the setup is complete, let's start animating in VR. Okay, so let's open the character that we want to animate. Here I have a character prepared. So the advantage of animating in Maya, of course, is that you can have like really complex and sophisticated rigs. This one is a Maya human IK rig. So this is very popular, especially in games development, because you can simply have different characters and different animations for those, walking animations, running animations, fighting animations and then map one animation to one character or another by using these character controls because they all share basically the same skeleton. But of course, the disadvantage here is that I can only ever move or rotate one thing at one time. So using VR to do this is going to be much more easy. So I'm going to start Marui now and jump into VR. Okay, here I am. And you can see my character in virtual reality. You can also see an uh, environment around me, this clouds that surround me. This is one of the environments that Marui offers. You can choose between different environments that are default included in Marui. They are all in the settings in the VR environment section. So if you don't like the clouds, there's also a lake. Or you could just have an empty environment. Can it take the environment that's already in your Maya project, if you have one already set up in there? Exactly. You can choose your own custom environment, which is basically any cube map that you like. So you can choose whatever textures you have and just load those into Marui if you have your own environment set up. Very cool. Okay, and now I can animate the character in VR. Of course, I have the normal Maya tools. I can open the tool menu by pushing the stick on the Oculus Rift controller to the right and then choose the, for example, the move tool or the rotate tool. You can either rotate it by dragging the axis or I can just grab the center and move it. But of course, the great advantage of working in VR is I can rotate and move at the same time. So I can just move it over here and rotate at the same time. Okay. Now, in order to animate it, I need to switch to the animation UI layout. Now, quick question for you. Is this room scale meaning that I can move myself around the character or do I need to move the character like in traditional Maya? You can set it to room scale. So with the shoulder buttons, you can also just like zoom in and out as you like. I see. But you can also set it by the set view menu to be exactly on the floor and exactly the correct size. So now this would be like a life-size person standing in front of me and I could walk around. But I can also just grab it here 
and make it like really tiny so it can fit right on my controller here, right? Sort of like you do with Oculus Medium. Exactly. Yeah, makes sense. So in order to get to the animation controls, I need to switch to the UI layout for animation because there are so many tasks that you can do in Maya that, of course, we cannot have all the features on all the buttons at the same time. So we have different layouts here that you can choose from. For example, for working with polygons or with NURBS or for animating. And you can also create your own layouts just for the Oculus Rift or HTC Vive. Just from the top list, choose which function you want to have on which controller button. For now, I'm just going to switch to animation. I just came from CES and I interviewed HTC. You know, they released the Vive Pro I. Are you going to look at doing anything with eye tracking here to make things easier without having to click in everywhere? Actually, that's a really good point. We already do have support for a different headset called the Vove that has eye tracking. So we already experiment with that and we already have like a first version that does support eye tracking. But of course, we don't have access to the next HTC headset yet. Right. So this is going to be something we're going to develop as soon as we can get our hands on it. Because that'll speed up the process, right, of animation. Exactly. But it's one more user interface feature, right? right? So of course, you can have the controllers and maybe you can use your eye tracking as well if you're used to that or if you think this is going to make your workflow better. Right. We always try to keep it as open as possible so that people can customize the user interface exactly to their needs. So now that I'm in the user interface layout for animation, I have a time slider on my left controller. So I can just quickly, by moving it side to side, zoom forward or backward through time. And if I hold the trigger button, it will move continuously. So I can just let it run through time. Right now, I don't have any animation yet. So this is the next thing I might have to do. I'm just going to select some of my controllers here, move the character. And in the animation menu, I have a button to set a keyframe. So let's make a pose here. And in order to get the full advantage of the Maya animation system, I will also open the human IK menus that you saw before, because it has a really cool feature that is called pinning. So if you pin a control, then you basically say, I'm finished with the way this is placed. And if I move some different controller now, then please don't move that one anymore. So you see the shoulder is still moving, but the chest stays the same because that one is already finished. Okay, so let's move the hip a bit to the back and the legs as well. To grab whatever part you want to grab, you're using the trigger? Yeah, I'm just clicking on it with a trigger to select it, and then I can just move it either by yeah. holding these move handles, or I can grab the center so I can move and rotate at the same time. Right, and it's showing your X, Y, Z just for reference, because really you don't need it. You're just moving it, right? Just you like don't need in it, real but of life. course, exactly. You can move it in real life, but sometimes you may want to move it just at one direction. Yeah, you want to be more precise, yeah. So then you can just grab one axis, and it's only going to move in this I axis, see. right? That makes sense, yep. Okay, so let's set the keyframes here for the controllers that we just moved. This one as well. Keyframe. And maybe I want to have the same keyframe on frame 24. And then let's get going with a different pose at frame 12. So once I may be interested in how this looks like, I can go to the playback mode. And now maybe I see that this animation is actually faster than I intended it. So I have to scale it in time. And one way I can do this is by using the animation editor. The animation editor will show me the keyframes for all the selected objects. So if I select all the controllers that I have been animating here, then you can see the list of animated objects and the keyframes that are on these objects. In order to give those a little bit more time, I will extend the time range that I'm using from currently 24 frames to, let's say, 48 frames. Now you can see that my time range has been extended to make more time. And I can easily select all of those keyframes, move the time, and move them through time. So I hold down shift so I can move all of them. 
And if I switch to the scale mode, I can scale these keys in time to make them. So while you're doing that, you said you're holding down the shift key. That means you have to use the keyboard for part of this. Uh, sorry, there's a shift button on my controller. I see, got it. That's okay. what I mean. So there's an alt and a shift button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the shift button just allows me to, to select multiple objects, or in this case, multiple keys. I just wanted to so clarify select... there's no keyboard needed. Right, no, there isn't. Okay. So I hold the shift button, and then I can say, okay, I want to scale these keys so they can take a little bit more time. Now if I play back again, you see the animation has become much slower. When we are finished with our animation, we can just end Marui and jump back into Maya. Now before we do that, are there any other functionality that you can't do in VR that you're looking at adding to this? So one thing that experienced animators will of course immediately ask is, what about curves? That means that I can control the... Yeah, the Bezier curve, again. right. Exactly, the animation curve yep. of how the ease in and ease out will work between keys. This is something that the animation editor right now cannot do. It can only show the position of the keys and you can move them around. This is something that we intend to add in later updates of Marui. So for doing that, you would have to go back into the desktop mode and do it there for now at least. For now, yes, but this is the advantage. You can still use all the Maya functionality. Just you have to quickly take off your headset and then you can use your normal Maya workflow again. Perfect. So now that we're done with the animation in VR, what's the next step? The next step, I will just close the Marui window to end it. And you can see the animation that I have done has just been applied to the character in Maya directly. So I can use the normal Maya tools, the time slider and the graph editor to refine my animation if I need it. And from here, I can now start exporting it into Unity or Unreal Engine. That's very cool because when we're in VR and you set it to room scale, right? So it's a real person. You can actually do the, the animation. You'll know exactly what it's going to look like in your VR game because it's basically, exactly. yeah. Yeah, that makes a big difference. Exactly. Okay, now we're going to export this to Unity. For this, we need to load another plugin. This one comes automatically with Maya and it's called the Game Pipeline plugin. And once this plugin is loaded, you can find file sent to Unity. So you're just going to set up your Unity project and then hit send to Unity. And here you can choose what of your scene you want to export. For example, you want to export the geometry or you want to export the animation. And it's going to be exported as an XPF file that you can immediately use in your Unity or Unreal Engine project. Very cool. So once you do that, then you open Unity and you just import it and pretty much go from there. Exactly. Cool. Well, thanks for sharing your plugin. Real quick, I know you're going to be offering a discount for people watching this. Can you tell us real quick what that is? Exactly. For the how to create VR community, we offer one month free trial. So you can check out Marui and see if it's what you want to use for your animation or modeling purposes. And then if you really like it and you want to start using it for your project, the second month is going to get a 50% discount. Excellent. And then we'll have all that information in our show notes as well. Max, thank you for participating in this tutorial today. I really appreciate it. If people want to get a hold of you, how can they do that? They can just reach us through our website. We have a contact form and they can also reach us via email. So www.marui-plugin.com. Perfect. And we'll put it on our show notes as well. So thanks again, Max. And to the rest of you, I'm glad you were here with us. Just a quick reminder, if you want to access all of our live events, tutorials, practice assets, podcasts, interviews, videos, and more, register for free at howtocreatevr.com. Finally, if you want to attend our live events in virtual reality, join us inside Altspace VR. Just visit howtocreatevr.com forward slash Altspace VR and subscribe to our channel. So until the next episode, I'm Marcelo Lewin. Cheers, everyone.